Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel, the only gun channel here on YouTube dripping with that BDE. That's right, Big Dad Energy. I filmed three videos back to back and my vocal cords are smoked, so that'll have to do. But if your child has ever corrected you that they are no longer James, but baby dinosaur, so you address them as that in public, then go ahead and hit the like button. I'm David and this is the Vortex Venom. Now, for those of you who've been in the pistol space on optics, you search forums and stuff like that, interested in trying out your first optic, if you asked what optics should I try red dots with in 2018, 2019? The Vortex Venom was commonly held up as that optic. Does that still stand up in 2023? I'm gonna go ahead and ruin that one for you and tell you no, and I'll show my work as to why. But the Vortex Venom is no longer, in my opinion, the viable on-ramp to red dot worlds, especially considering the quality of optics and how far we've come. So breaking that down for you as to why I would not recommend this optic. I mean, the number one thing this thing has going for it is cost. It was generally about a $200 to $250 optic. It goes for about $250 now, but that's not all you end up spending if you were to buy one of these optics. You end up having to buy screws for it. So I spent about $8 in fasteners, bought 100 screws just so I could mount this optic correctly onto the sight plates that everybody has for this. I mounted this on the Canic Rival and I mounted this now on the Shadow 2. And the issue was the same on both pistols. The provided hardware with the optic did not work in either of those guns. I had to buy screws just to mount the pistol sight onto a pistol, which is kind of silly. Once I did get it mounted onto this, if you watched my video comparing the Rival S to all of the other carry optics guns, and you should, it was a great video. Vortex Venom that I just mounted on this Shadow doesn't adjust elevation. So at 21 yards that I'm at right now, I'm probably gonna hold four inches above the target to see if we can't get it in there. So just for point of reference, that this was my point of aim. You'll know that I was not able to get this optic to zero, and that's because this is an issue that Vortex is aware of. If you have a perfectly flat optical plate that you're mounting the sight onto, like this, this is the genuine Article CZ optic plate, you end up having to shim it with a one degree shim so that the zero can come down and hit where the gun is pointed. That seems like an engineering miss that if you require somebody else to make a shim so that your pistol sight can work on pistols, and this is a known issue with these optics. If you Google it, you'll come up with lots of people making the recommendation. So that was another 15 bucks I ended up having to spend in order just to get the pistol sight mounted onto a pistol. So at that point, I'm about $300 into this pistol sight, which at that point, you've got a ton of different competitors and it sits on a doctor style footprint. So kind of playing it forward, there were two other sites that are on the doctor footprint that I tried just to see if the Venom had some competition. The first is the Primary Arms SLX RS10. If you were looking for an everyday carry sight, this thing sells commonly for about $200 and it's built much more like a tank than this sucker is. Next is the Mechanic M02, and that's basically Canic's version of the Venom, and it has a bigger window. It takes a 2032 battery as opposed to the 1632 that the Venom takes. And the only downside to that is that the dot is a little bit small, whereas the Venom is in three or six MOA, this being a six MOA. So if you aren't scared off yet and you're still interested in the optic, the glass is actually a pretty good, pretty clean glass. It does distort what you're aiming at with it, but it's again one of those things that on a pistol doesn't really matter. Like the glass clarity is fine. The dot clarity is pretty good. It bursts a little bit even to my corrected astigmatism dialed down to the brightness that I need, but in full sunlight that effect is pretty much almost gone. It's only on cloudy days, interior ranges, or inside your house where the star bursting becomes an issue. The thickness of the body uh, as far as getting the dot down closer to the deck, it has kind of a thick body, which is kind of less than ideal. We've come a long way in how these sights are built so you can get the window closer down to the top of the slide so that it's more like shooting an iron sight gun. That's certainly not the end of the world, but a lot of other pistol sights don't have quite so high a deck. One thing that the Venom is famous for is the Vortex Ask No Questions warranty. If one of these breaks, and they probably will break, then they'll send you a new one basically straight up. The only reason I say that they will break is that if you mount it on the gun and never shoot it, it doesn't break. I have a buddy who shot competitively with the Venom on his gun for a year. He went 
went through 12 in a single year just because when you shoot a lot, the things break. Now, keep in mind, he is a very high burn shooter. So he's doing like 40 to 50,000 rounds a year. And he was just breaking these sights all the time. So this kind of sight is probably best reserved for a 22 or non-reciprocating type slide. For a slide ride, they're probably more durable options. And you can kind of see how the housing is designed. It's just a super thin hood that goes around the optic. But ultimately the Venom, it has a place in history. It's kind of helping a lot of people on board into the carry optics game. But in 2023, until Vortex comes along and makes updates to this site, I would say that it's kind of obsolete at this point. But you'll continue to see it on this gun until it breaks or I find something else that fancies me in future videos on the channel. Be sure and subscribe. As always, I appreciate you guys and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks guys.